Welcome. Today in this documentary, we're going to be talking and discussing and showing footage of sensory integration disorder. Sensory integration disorder is mostly found in people with autism. It affects how we look at things, uh, smell things and hear things. It could be more painful, less painful or something on that line. There are obviously lots of variants of sensory integration disorder. But today we'll be uh, focusing on the oversensitive variant and with such, hope you enjoy. As shown here, the person depicted in this point of view shot is very much bearing the same traits as someone with sensory integration disorder and therefore autism. They get distracted at the environment around them, looking at the lights, signs and other things such as the steps to the right, they get distracted and overwhelmed by the sounds and lights. They move less elegantly and seem to interpret the world slower compared to the neutral example before this. However, they do seem to be more aware of their environment. Question is, whether they will remember it after sensory overload they'll be experiencing. As this person walks down the stairs, you can see they do this confidently, but carefully, and without getting distracted or overloaded via their environment. Now we'll have a look at another sensory integration disorder point of view. We can see that the person gets very distracted and seems to dawdle and not very confidently move down the stairs. This may be due to the fact that the balance of a person with sensory integration disorder may be hindered. Getting distracted at the lights that may cause the person pain and discomfort to look at, they look away very quickly and could even become dizzy and nauseous from the sharp light. Welcome back viewers. As you can see, someone with sensory integration disorder may perceive the world slower than a neurotypical or a normal person may do. This is due to something called a sensory overload. Well, there's too much stimuli such as sounds and lights and smells um, uh, in the environment. And, and what this can entail is unfortunately being in a normal or healthy environment can make it so that it's a bit painful even though it's normal and I hope that uh, the environment that you were in if it's a college or an office or even the street uh, with someone with sensory integration disorder you'll obviously have to have patience and give them a place to stay for when they are sensory overloaded and with such, they should get better and they should be able to carry on with their day.
Welcome back viewers for the last time. As you can see, someone with sensory integration disorder may fumble or get lost within an environment, just getting distracted, and with that comes another notion called an aftermath of a sensory overload. And, and, and what this means is after work or college or school or just going out for fun, what can happen is a person can get back and they'll have headaches, uh, pain, unbalanced and they'll probably actually feel somewhat nauseous to some extent if it's a bad sensory overload. And what this means is they'll have to rest. So for example, someone that's neurotypical or normal can come in and cook food, go on their games console, watch a film. Someone with sensory integration disorder who's experienced the aftermath of a sensory overload will probably just have to wait a few hours while they cool down. And that's where, in my opinion, we must be more understanding. And with that, that's, that's the finale uh, to sensory integration disorder documentary. And with such, I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.